All right, so this video is teaching how to take three vectors, add them together, and find your resultant vector using our trigonometry. Okay, so you'll see here, like we've worked through, uh, step one is draw your vectors. Okay, now I haven't completed that yet because I also need to include my internal angles. So here I have three meters per second at 115. So if this is 90, that means that from here to 90 is going to be 25 degrees. Okay, here is my y value. There is my x value. Okay, same thing goes here, uh, 5 meters per second at 225. So here is my x value. And now again, pay attention to negatives and positives. That's going to count in just a little bit. So this is negative, so is this. That y is positive. This y is down, therefore it's negative. Okay, if it's 225, the known, closest known angle is 180, which means to get to 225, I go an additional 45 degrees. So that's my internal angle there. My last one, uh, I, I get it easy, this one has no angle. It's all on the x-axis. So I can actually go ahead and say x in this case is equal to 4 meters per second. Y, it's not moving in the y, 0 meters per second. Okay, so step two is solve for our vector components. So for my first one here, we'll call this vector one, this is vector two, and we'll call that three. Okay, so for vector one, I gotta figure out my x and my y. So I'm gonna look, and by the way, this is what we're using to find which function to use and so forth. So 25 degrees, Three meters per second is my hypotenuse. If I'm looking for x, I have opposite hypotenuse, so I'm going to use the sine function of my angle is going to be equal to my opposite over my hypotenuse. So opposite is x, hypotenuse is 3, so I sub my values in. Sine of 25 is going to be equal to my opposite x divided by my hypotenuse 3. So using algebra, I end up with, I multiply both sides by 3, I end up with 3 times sine of 25. That's going to be equal to my x value. So 3 times sine 25, I get 1.27. And that's in meters per second. Now, again, we got to pay attention because if I look at my diagram, my x here is actually negative. So I have to keep that in mind. Now, I look at my y and it's adjacent, and so I'm going to use the similar function except cosine because I'm looking for adjacent. I have my hypotenuse. I have 25 degrees. So it ends up being cosine of 25 is going to be equal to my adjacent y divided by 3, which is my hypotenuse. So using algebra, it becomes 3 times cosine of 25. y ends up being 2.7 2. There's my x, there's my y. Okay, so uh, those are the two that we're looking for. Now, moving on, okay, um, to my next vector, I have a negative x and a negative y, just to keep in mind when I'm actually recording and, and keeping track of what I have. So, uh, 5 meters per second is the hypotenuse, x is adjacent, so before, my x was the opposite. So realize that you can't always use the sine function to solve for x, because in this case, I'm going to have to use cosine of 45 to get x over 5. Okay, so cosine of 45 times 5 will give me my x. So x ends up being 3.54 meters per second. I forgot that there. Okay, got to look and be careful here because my x is going from here in the negative direction, so it's actually negative. And then knowing what we know about right, or right triangle trig and 45 degree angles, I know that this and that are the same. Okay, you can go ahead and do the, the, the sine function to check it, but ultimately we're going to end up with the same number and actually y is also negative, so it's going to be negative 3.54 meters per second in the y direction. Okay, so we have our first three steps done. 
two steps, solve for our components. Now step three is record and solve in our table. So I'm going to go ahead and move my paper up here a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and record this one down right away. So my x is 4 for my vector 3. My y was 0 for my vector 3. Okay, my other two vectors, uh, we'll go to vector 1 here. Okay, x was negative 1.27. Y was 2.72. Okay, whoops, I didn't realize that was out of the picture. And then my second vector, vector 2, we had X to be negative 3.54. And Y is also negative 3.54. Okay, so that's that. Now we have to find our totals. So negative 1.27 plus negative 3.54 plus 4. Our total in the x direction is going to be negative 0.81. Okay, our total in the y is going to be 2.72 plus negative 3.54. Oh, got an error there. There it is. And I also actually get in this one, negative 0.82. Okay, so here's my x total, here's my y total. Now I have to actually draw those vectors. For my x, I need to go negative 0.81. So I'm going to draw this, and I'm going to say that's negative 0.81, and then my y is going to be 0.82. So it's going to go up 0.82. Oh no, I screwed up. That actually, excuse me, negative 0.82. I've got to pay attention to my signs. It's going to go down in the y direction, negative 0.82. So what I have here sorry, technical error. Uh, so what I have here is my triangle to start, and we are going to work to find our resultant vector and our resultant angle using trig to do so. So right away usually we figure out the resultant magnitude to start by using Pythagorean's theorem. So it's going to be 0 0.81 squared plus 0 0.82 squared. Okay and then I'm going to take the square root of that to get my resultant of 1.15. Okay, so again, that was Pythagorean's theorem using a squared plus b squared to get our c squared. Okay, so that's my resultant magnitude. I need to find this angle. And so the way that I would do so is using our inverse tangent function because I have my opposite and I have my adjacent leg. So it's going to be tangent inverse of opposite 0.82 adjacent 0.81 is equal to our angle. Now, by the way, a lot of people get confused when you drop the negatives and put them in here. Okay, um, I drop them just because we're now dealing with the triangle, and that's all that we really care about is the angle and the triangle. The negatives and the positives uh, don't matter. We kind of put together everything to find our resultant angle after we've solved for the internal angle of the triangle. So, anyways, inverse tangent of 0.82 divided by 0.81 gives me 45.35 degrees. Okay, and so that is... Okay, so now that we have our angle, okay, we have to actually report our answer um, using the full thing because, again, this is a vector, and vectors need to have both magnitude and direction. So. I would report my resultant as 1.15 meters per second, okay, but I also need a direction. So one way to do it would be direction notation by saying at, and I know I have 45 degrees inside my angle, but if I look at my angle, I'm going 45 degrees to the south, and I'm starting from my western direction. So I could say, and I think this is easier, 45.35 degrees south of west. 
The other way you can do this is reported as such, but know that you have to report your angle notation in reference to zero. So I have 180 here, and then I have an additional 45.35 there. So if I wanted to do direction, I'm sorry, uh, degree notation, I have to take 180 plus my 45.35. So knowing that, I get 225.35. So my full answer there would be 115, 1.15 meters per second at 225.35 degrees. Okay. I wanted to put this video together mostly to show you guys that doing three vectors, like so, okay, really doesn't change the process or the method at all. It just has one more column for you to account for, but ultimately then getting us to the same type of reporting for the same type of answer. Hopefully that helps. That is adding three vectors for finding one resultant vector.